For 30 days straight, I'm only going to be playing fitness games. This means no Valorant, no Minecraft, and no League of Legends at all. Basically, if the game wasn't going to make me literally sweat, it was completely banned out of my personal life. To make matters just a little bit more interesting, I'm unable to work out in any other way either. I can't lift weights, I can't run, heck, I can't even do push-ups. Which is insane because the ground is always like right there. Now, of course, the big question is why would anybody do this? Have I gone completely crazy or am I just trying to make my $1,000 VR setup a tax write-off? Well, the truth is a lot simpler than that. Because I wanted to develop the world's first ever gamer body. A body crafted by video games and video games alone. How much progress can I actually make in 30 days of hardcore gaming? Will I lose weight? And will swinging these weird futuristic sci-fi controllers even do anything in the grand scheme of things? Let's go find out. Okay, not really. We're actually shooting the intro part after with a little trick called movie magic. Now, there's a lot of fitness games for me to choose from. There's the world famous Wii Fit, which is currently sitting on number 11 most sold video games of all time. I know Wii Fit Trainer was hot, but god damn, that's high. There's Dance Dance Revolution, which is a pretty cool game, but I didn't want to drive to the arcade every single day to go play it. It sounds like a lot of work and very awkward social interactions. Instead, I'm going to rely on two gaming devices that I could use in a magical place I call my bedroom. Number one, a virtual reality headset, which will enable me to play games that are going to require me to use my entire body. And number two, this thing. If you don't know what it is, I'll explain later. With the stage set and my weapons chosen, I set off on my first week of gamer training. VR gaming is kind of magical, and there's a lot of games that can get your heart rate up and pumping. You could sword fight, you could earth bend, you could do whatever the hell that is. But out of everything that this headset had to offer, I felt like my best starting option is Beat Saber, a game where you practically dance to music by slicing boxes that come flying at your face. The reason I chose this game is because A, music is really cool, and B, because I feel like zoning out to bangers would be the easiest way to actually burn calories. It's a new day. I haven't heard this song in so long. Oh my God. Yeah! The first day of doing this was actually significantly harder than I expected it to be. How does anyone do this shit? It's ridiculous. That should not be that hard. Not to mention that I started this challenge in quite literally the worst shape I've ever been in in my life. 186 pounds. Oh. Oh no. Turns out that playing video games and eating McDonald's for every other meal wasn't really a lifestyle that would send me to the Olympics. I know. It's tragic. Though it was pretty difficult moving for what felt like the first time in my life. I'm so tired. Like I'm actually so exhausted. Oh. I still pushed very hard and ended up burning a whopping 531 calories. Which, believe it or not, is about one seventh of a pound on a human body. For those of you who use kilograms, grow up. And now it's time for our first physique check. So we're done with our workout for day one, but as you can see, I got myself some love handles. I'm not, I'm not the most toned person right now, all right? What can I say? I like carne asada fries. Are you gonna fing sue me? The next few days were actually not that bad. This challenge was already kind of doing what I had wished for. It gave me a reason to get up off of my gamer chair and do something that was actually good for my body. More gaming. Beat Saber's starting to whoop my ass a little bit, but it does feel possible. I do want to say that. And that's exciting. Something about seeing the calories burned go up was addicting. It kind of felt like trying to get a high score while trying to get a high score. It was endorphinception. That's kind of that's kind of clever. I don't know. So we're currently on day number six of this entire burning calories through fitness game video. I feel like I'm getting good enough at Beat Saber 
that I can now play very hard songs and because of it, my heart rate is starting to spike a lot more. With skill-based games like Dance Dance Revolution or Beat Saber, the better you are, the harder it is. And because of this, once you start reaching expert levels, you start burning calories a lot faster. We ended up burning in our second session about 550 calories in an hour, which is a, a really good feeling. It's getting harder because my heart is about to jump out of my mouth, but it's getting easier to, to, to get it done in my day. You know what I mean? Standing up and having to swing your arms around for hours every single day is exhausting and time consuming. So being able to cut down that time and still burn calories felt pretty good. I am completely drenched. Like, oh my goodness. Another perk about Beat Saber was the more you learned how to move for this video game, the more you're free to add your own twists. You go from being the virgin wrist abuser to the Chad power dancer. Okay, that feels a lot cooler than it looks. <laughs> because of all of these perks, I saw myself starting to grind Beat Saber and nothing else. Woo! I'm getting so good at this shit. I'm getting, I'm becoming a beast. And looking back at it now, this form of thinking was also my downfall. In order to explain it, I want to talk to you about something that destroys competitive games over and over again, and can suck the fun out of something you love and make it feel more like a job. I'm referring to the meta, also known as the most effective tactic available. Basically, a video game comes out and there's a bunch of different characters to choose from. But then, only a few days after the game is released, a couple of gaming virtuosos analyze data and realize that these characters are just significantly better than all the rest. When the meta becomes so unbalanced that no matter what you do, you have to keep fighting the same overpowered person again and again and again, you'll eventually get bored. And your choices are to either succumb to the evil voices and choose the meta character, or play what you think is fun even though you know it's nowhere near as efficient. So why did I tell you this story? Beat Saber was proving itself to be the best way by far to burn calories. But because of it, my stupid competitive gamer brain made me opt into playing Beat Saber again and again and again and again because it became my VR meta. Oh god, not that one. Get that off the screen. I tried to do this thing where I played different games to burn calories today and they just did not work out. So we're going back to Beat Saber tomorrow. In literally 10 minutes, we've burned more calories in this game than the other one. Maybe just playing shooting games ain't to play. We were still a little early on the challenge, so it wasn't that bad, but I was starting to miss real games. Alright, let's do f***ing KDA, whatever. It's ironic, I guess. But then, I was hit by the first massive obstacle in our journey my birthday. I had a wonderful time with the people that I loved most. But throughout the entire night, I knew for sure that my next day was going to be full of sweaty gaming and one of my world famous two day hangovers. And boy, was I right. So I'm burning calories, but I'm also just kind of bad at the game. Cause I'm fucking, cause I'm still drunk. <laughs> Playing the same songs and game over and over again did help me pass the time, but it started to feel more like a chore every single day. I'm in a prison of my own mind, and every single day I am forced to, 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 to swing my little funny swords. So I just decided to switch things up and break the meta. Yes, these other games were nowhere near as effective at burning fat off of my body, but it didn't matter. The whole point of this video was to see if fitness games were enough to keep my unhealthy ass interested. And this method actually worked. A bad workout is better than no workout at all. I played bullet hells with my friends, I played roguelikes, and of course, I played more Beat Saber. Then, when finally hitting the end of my second week, I did another physique check. Uh, so here's where we're at. I kind of had a rough weekend, as in it was one of the most fun weekends of my life, uh, but I was drunk for three days. Uh, we'll check again in a week. I was starting to feel a little good about myself. I mean, sure, when you look at these two photos back to back, it's pretty hard to tell how much work I've actually been putting in, how many squares I cut in half, how many arrows I saw when I closed my eyelids, and how many dreams were interrupted by the sounds of Lady Gaga. I know VR gaming is pretty futuristic and hard, but I'm not expecting to swing around these plastic controls and somehow obtain the chest of Arnold Schwarzenegger while all also getting the ass 
of Arnold Schwarzenegger, I guess, because he was pretty caked up. Finally, I stepped on the scale and I was down about 4.2 pounds. That scale is a bastard and it lies for no one. So seeing actual physical evidence that my gamer training had been paying off filled me with enough gusto to keep going. I'm gonna groove and I'm gonna see if I have it in me to, to, to bust down in the way that I must. I could feel the routine of fitness games starting to form in my brain, but I had to keep it interesting, so I kept jumping around random games. And because of it, I'll even say that the challenge was fun. It wasn't something that I dreaded throughout my day, like a lot of the other exercises I've done. This just kind of became part of my life. On top of that, I found this super cool game called Mother Gunship Forge, which I beat over and over again with my friend Vincent. We literally played it like every night and it was so good. It's a VR bullet hell, so you're like dodging bullets and lasers the entire time. And it's a roguelike, which is my favorite genre. And it's in contention for my favorite favorite VR game of all time. But the crazy thing about this game is that it somehow only has 108 reviews on Steam. I guess nobody really knows about it, so go check it out if you have VR. I promise you it's one of the best experiences of your life. Things were looking up, and that 30-day mark was quickly approaching. But then I had a big trip to take out of state. Going to EVO was such a massive wrench in my plan for a couple of reasons. EVO took place in Vegas, which is the alcoholic bad food capital of the world. Here's the part where I wish that I could tell you that I did good. That I didn't go drinking or eat anything unhealthy so that I could get better results for the end of this challenge. However, my biggest weakness in life is not my lack of self-control. It's that I never learned how to lie. I ate and drank a lot. Realizing that a wired VR setup is not something I wanted to bring to my hotel room, I had to resort to using my secret weapon. This thing which I showed you in the beginning of the video. And a little known game called Ring Fit Adventure. Only on Nintendo Switch. Even thinking about this game c c kind of raises nerves in me because I know how hard this game is. It's very deceptively difficult. Even though I've been burning a lot of calories on Beat Saber, what I've done so far is the easy part. Though this may look like a weird fitness device that your mom would have bought from an infomercial back in the early 2000s, it's actually a lot more than that. Best of all, you're burning calories while you're having fun. It's a pretty beautiful game. The soundtrack is nice, the story is endearing, and it is the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. Oh my God, whoever made this was secretly trying to create a army of Nintendo Spartans. I'm not gonna sit here and explain the entire game to you, but imagine if you were playing a normal turn-based RPG, and then when you click attack, it says, give us 20 sit-ups. So you do 20 of the slowest sit-ups you've ever done in your life, you finish your attack and it does 15 damage, but the enemy has 300 health, and you're fighting four of them. And this little bag right here, guess what his weakness is? That's right. Squats. After 10 minutes of the slowest and most grueling exercises that Nintendo could come up with, guess what you have to do to get to your next fight? Yeah, you're not done yet, bozo. You have to run in real life. I know a lot of people who personally love this game. My friend Yako actually made a fantastic video on it if you want to learn more. But being 100%, this game just wasn't for me. But this game, obviously... Is made to kill people. The point of using video games to exercise is for the exercise to feel like video games. Beat Saber and other VR titles made it easy because you would literally get lost in a new world. Ring Fit Adventure didn't do that for me. In fact, the calorie counter on Ring Fit Adventure is a joke. And I've done a lot of fitness before, so I could tell you that this is absolutely not right. In Ring Fit, I'm over there fucking jumping doing 40 squats for a single attack, and then after 10 minutes it goes, don't worry bro, you burned 30 calories. So pissed at the calorie counter on that game. But still, I had nothing else I could use, so I toughed it out for the rest of my Vegas trip. And honestly, I don't know if it was just because I was hungover, or the sheer difficulty of the game, but this was the closest I came to quitting the challenge. 
after a few more days in Vegas and a short flight home, I got back hungover as hell and jumped into my third physique check. Again, these results didn't look too insane, but I did drop my weight down another three pounds, putting me at 177. Getting into the 170s club was a pretty good feeling. I can't explain how happy I felt getting that scale to pat me on the back, but it felt pretty great. So we're currently on day number 20 of this challenge, and honestly, I do feel like uh, I, I am feeling better than I was at the beginning. Something I do want to say is that ring fit is such a substantially harder thing to do in my brain than Beat Saber is. It is currently 2 a.m. because I've just been sitting here all day going, I'll do it after I finish this task. I'll do it after I finish this task. I just need to like get over the hurdle of, of how much this game actually hurts me, you know? So let's do it. But I realized in the middle of my labored breaths that I kind of lost the point of this challenge to begin with. If I wanted to create my own gamer body, I'd have to do it in a way that gamers would. And in turn, I had to be playing games that would make me happy. Because unless you're somebody that grinds League of Legends, gaming is supposed to be something that makes you smile. We are currently about three weeks into this project. I've tested myself, I've gone too hard, I've not gone hard enough, and I've actually missed a few days. But the thing I'm struggling with the most right now is the fact that Ring Fit Adventure is just straight up torture. So in order to fall back in love with it, I figured that for the next two days, I'm just gonna go back to playing Beat Saber or doing something that is more in line with what I like to do and not, you know, 20 f***ing squats for one attack. I was actually so excited to come back and play games that brought me comfort before. That's good. Even playing Beat Saber on Expert now felt like relaxing more than it did like work. I used to think this song was the hardest thing in the world. That's all it is! We were reaching the finish line and I could taste the end of this challenge. Expert plus bada bing. I'm so f***ing cracked I'm gonna go pro. But something was getting on my nerves. I couldn't help but feel like I was defeated in Vegas by a game that should have been fun. I didn't have a collar on my neck so I didn't know why I was acting like a bitch. So I grit my teeth and decided that I was going to give Ring Fit Adventure one last try. Just to prove to myself that I could kick this plastic circle's ass if I wanted to. And though it was still insanely difficult, I did find each rep getting easier and easier as I adjusted to the game's much stronger pace. I'm not entirely sure if I would recommend this game for those looking to get into fitness gaming, because it's actually like 75% working out and 25% game but I will admit that it made me very sore the times that I did play it. And I'm sure that if I played it just enough times, then it would have chiseled me into some sort of nerdy Adonis. With only a few days left, I decided that I should finish this challenge off on the games that mattered most to me. So for the last few days, I jumped back into Beat Saber. Uh, uh, oh. Do not play songs that are too hard or you're gonna punch yourself in the dick. Modded Beat Saber actually has this fantastic feature where you can record and watch your gameplay. Now, normally this concept is not that impressive, but in VR, it's different. There's a nuance to how you swing your saber and an awkwardness when you lose your rhythm and try to find your pacing again. I know it's something that's so like childish or whatever, but seeing your exact movements be replicated in real time even on something as dumb as this, it's kind of surreal, I'll be honest. And in the context of this video, I can witness in real time how much effort this challenge actually took. It was pretty mesmerizing. And it really made me admire how VR technology actually made fitness gaming fun for me. I don't know, it's weird. It's, it's weird that gaming has gone this far. Very cool though. And then... We were done. In grand total, I started my journey at 186.2 pounds. And without much changes to my diet and doing VR and ring fit just about every single day for 30 days, I dropped down to 177.6, meaning I lost a total of 8.6 pounds, which averages about 2.1 pounds a week, which is a pretty healthy rate to lose weight. And this is me today. Is it different? We'll do a side-by-side. 
Still got a bit of, still, still got a bit of the muffin top going on here. It's still there. Oh, it still exists. If I didn't go to Vegas or party every other weekend that month, I'm pretty sure I could have easily hit the 10 pound mark, but I'm not gonna lie and overdo it just to get better results for content. That's not the point. My body results weren't that drastic, and this isn't going to be selling any posters or ending up on a sexy calendar, but that's not why I did it. The point was to see if I could get into better shape using video games and video games alone. And I feel like I did pretty well. There's obviously better and more meta ways to lose weight. But this was a very fun start for someone like me who had been eating trash almost every meal and living a really sedentary lifestyle. I'd 100% recommend this to anyone who just wants to get started on their fitness journey. Fitness, fitness balls in your mouth. <laughs> Got him. Vior was a fantastic Kickstarter, and even now, weeks after that last update video, I've still been working on my fitness. I'm planning to continue losing weight, and if I ever feel myself getting too lazy to go to the gym or just dreading the next time I see a squat rack, what is that? Is that a squat counter? Whoa, that's a squat counter! It feels pretty good to know that I could just boot up a video game instead. And that's why I call these 30 days a resounding success. If I could just take a second to go off script here, I really wanna tell you guys a story. One time I was struggling to get in the zone and actually go work out. So I messaged my friend Vincent. I said, hey Vincent, what is it that you do when you feel too lazy to go to the gym and get a good workout in? And he looked me in the eyes and he replied with something that I will never forget till the day I die. I don't know, I just have a shitty workout. <laughs> Now, I know it doesn't sound like much, but that was the moment that I realized that not every single training day has to be an anime moment where you're kicking a tree 10,000 times and then crying because you can't beat up your nemesis. Sometimes you could just go for a walk or do a couple of sit-ups or sit on an exercise ball or even just play video games. As long as you try a little bit, your effort is not being wasted. Take it from me, the guy who just played fitness games for 30 30 days straight. One step is infinitely better than zero, so as long as you take that one step, you're headed in the right direction. This was a very difficult challenge and probably the biggest video we've ever done, so please subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already so that you don't miss a banger like this one. If any of you guys have played any video games to get fit, can you guys let me know in the comments section which other games you guys played that you could just play for hours and burn calories? I really want to know more so that I can throw them into my morning routine. We're also working on another challenge which was way harder than this one, so make sure you have that bell ring so that you don't miss that because it was miserable. Oh Lord, we're at the end screen. I don't know what to do. Click on one of the videos in the screen right now. You gotta click on one of those two videos. If you don't click on one of the videos, then it's gonna, you're, it's gonna explode. We're gonna explode. Is that what you want? You're gonna wait here until the explosion goes off? Quick, click on one of the videos. Nothing blew up. I tricked you.